So today I'm going to talk about um, SIFs in Alfresco 4 Zero. Um, for those that uh, have been using SIFs for a while, I'll, I'll explain some of the um, issues we've been having with um, older versions of Alfresco. I'll present some of the changes that we made in Alfresco 4, um, and then I will, I will uh, tell you how to configure shuffle scenarios for, um, in Alfresco 4. Um, I'm going to explain these terms in, in, in a short while. Um, we'll then have some questions and answers, and I'm well aware that it's lunch following this session, so I'm aiming to, to finish promptly. Um, if you have questions that are specific to your, um, to your particular um, use cases, then I can be, you can put your name on the um, engineering office hours and we'll have a session after. Okay, so to get started, uh, first of all, I'm going to give uh, a little bit of background so that uh, people understand what I'm talking about. Um, so um, si uh, there's two Alfresco pro um, pro products involved in providing SIFs. The first is um, Alfresco JLAN, um, and that provides, um, that provides SIFs, NFS, and FTP, um, and Alfresco JLAN deals with the, um, the wire formats, so I, I don't intend to talk about the low level, um, uh, the low level sort of details of how SIFs works in this. Um, in this session, so I'm going to be concentrating on the Alfresco side. Um, so that, that's the lower, um, the lower box with the Alfresco because that, that's that's the bit that I I want to talk about. So um, just the first diagram just shows uh, uh, JLAN and Alfresco, and um, within um, JLAN um, there's there's two main parts. There are the, uh, there's the protocol handler, which um, which basically is the the bit of code that knows how to sp how, how to speak SIFs over your network, and there's something called uh, the file state cache. Um, the file state cache is important because it has um, it has a certain amount of metadata that is not stored in Alfresco. In particular, um, things like the last modification. Um, things like a last modified date for SIFs is, is the last time you receive a packet. Now, you don't want to be updating the Alfresco repository for every single packet you receive. So instead, that, that data lives in the file state cache, and it's only when the entire, um, the entire file is ready that, that Alfresco gets involved. Um, it also contains locks, so if you work with if you work with SIFs, um, it has a, a very complicated uh, um, method of locking. Uh, I don't intend to, to talk about SIFs locking in this session either, other than say that it's dealt with by JLAN. And it's also got session information, so for example, who's logged on and, and when. Um, and, and then that feeds into, into Alp. So, um, I mentioned, I mentioned uh, a shuffle, so uh, let, me, let me explain what I'm talking about by SIF shuffle, because I think it could be a term that I've invented myself. Um, because SIFS is not transactional, uh, and by, by, that me, by that I mean that, um, that uh, while, while someone is writing a file in SIF, someone else could be reading that file, and if you're not very careful, you could read um, you could read half the file, which would probably do no one any good at all. Um, ver um, various SIFS client applications use, um, use a technique called shuffling. So instead of just opening a file and updating a file and saving a file, they do, they do various clever stuff. Um, so for example, this is, this, this is what I've called a create shuffle, and it's how um, it's how Microsoft Word um, actually saves. So we start with a file uh, A. Um, so the first thing Word does is it creates a temporary file. Uh, it moves the uh, old file out of the way. Uh, it then moves the temp file into the file A position 
and deletes the old file. So that's, that's a simple create shuffle. Um, and if you think about it, that's precisely what we don't want happening in Alfresco. So um, it's just a bit of a, a comparison between SIFS and Alfresco. Um, SIFS is a, a file folder um, protocol, so it only knows about file and folder. Um, and Windows has a tiny little bit of metadata. For example, you can put a title on documents. Um, and later versions of, 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 of Windows, there's probably about four or five fields that you can store on your files and folders. Um, of course, Alfresco is, has very rich content and metadata, so there's an issue there. Um, the metadata in Windows tends to be hard-coded, so you know, those, those few fields that you can set, like title and name, that's all, that's all you can do. Um, uh, files in SIFS aren't versioned, whereas files in Alfresco are versioned, so you can go back and look at history. Um, the sorry. Um, and also, one of the, one of the big differences is that uh, SIFS is a packet level protocol, so it's lots of packets of four bytes or eight bytes going over the network, whereas modern um, modern file protocols tend to be streams. So, as I was saying, that this, this causes problems with, if, you, if you've got a file, you've put 4K into it, is, is that file complete or not? Um, so, SIFS only deals with really create, read, write, delete, and rename. Um, there's a few other odd things like locking, but, but, main, but those are the main operations. Alfresco, it has lots of, lots of different operations, but again, you don't have these, re these read and write operations that, um, that could result in half um, incomplete content. Um, and it's also worth saying that in SIFS, it's multiple separate operations. So for example, we saw the, the, uh, the, the SIFS uh, shuffle that Word does, so it creates a file adds a little bit of content, adds a bit more content, adds a bit more content. Eventually, it will get round to closing the file and saving the file. Um, that all takes lots and lots of transactions. We end up with lots and lots of, of, um, lots and lots of, of, of points that, that the, the, the operation could die and go away. When, when you're working with Alfresco, um, it's a fairly coarse transaction, so all your, tra all, all your content goes in or nothing. Um, you, you, don't have this, you don't have this problem of, um, of some content has gone in and, and some hasn't. Um, it's also worth mentioning that uh, um, SIFS is file folder, um, so that's basically a, a single tree, whereas Alfresco has potentially lots of associations so you can have you can have fairly complicated um, well, you can have types and associations and, and secondary associations and all sorts of clever stuff uh, that, that SIFS knows nothing about so mapping mapping between the two can be um, an issue so some of the issues that um, that uh, that we tried to address in Alfresco 4 um, not go on to. Um, the first was um, we'd got a bit of a, um, a bit of history that we'd fix. We'd fix one issue with SIFS and, and, bre and break and break an older um, an older piece of functionality. So, um, in particular, what we what we started doing was we tried to hard code um, a single set a single way of handling all these shuffles. And over time, what, what happened is that um, these things got more and more complicated as bits of code was added on top um, until we got to the situation where we'd, we'd fix something and break something. So starting in 3.4, um, we, we produced a, a fairly extensive um, set of automated tests. So, so the idea is then that we start ratcheting 
the behavior forward and don't suffer from regression. So that started in 3.4. Um, if, you know, um, if you know older versions of um, Alfresco, Al JLAN, don't cluster. Um, if, we go, if, we, if you remember back to the first slide um, where, where I showed you the JLAN, there's, there's lock information in JLAN didn't cluster, so that's, that's a problem when you've got multiple nodes um, in SIFs. So, 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 so that file state cache was a problem. Um, but we've do, we did two things, two things in, in um, Alfresco 4. The first is that um, JLAN um, made its, its file state cache clustered and um, and for those that, um, so, so we introduced some technology called Hazelcast that, um, that is used for clustering the JLAN state cache. Um, it actually works very well. So um, the next versions of, of Alfresco use, um, uh, we basically standardized on Hazelcast so that, so that all future versions of of Alfresco are just going to use Hazelcast rather than, if, if you know how to, previous versions would either use JGroups or EHCache. So all future versions of Alfresco are just going to use Hazelcast and it's far easier to configure. It's basically just, you configure it, it, it just works. Um, so um, the, other, the other issue is that um, uh, that we had certain certain data being cached in the file state cache that shouldn't be cached. So, so we removed and reworked that um, that um, that dependency. And at that point, protocols like FTP were clustered. Um, and I've just got the third point, which is I fixed the node monitor, which is a low-level detail, but um, that was done. So, so, um, so SIFS clusters once we've done those three things. Um, if you've used older versions of, of SIFs, you may have had an irritating, um, an irritating situation where um, from time to time we had leaking transactions. So leaking transactions were very, very bad news. Um, but uh, um, you know, and eventually you have to reboot your, your SIF server. So anyway, I just wanted to record that uh, that th <laughs> that's been reworked and fixed. So so instead of um, instead of transactions being opened in JLAN and then multiple operations in Alfresco being done uh, and then the transaction is being closed, um, we've made it so each JLAN interaction with Alfresco is a single transaction. So at the end of that interaction. It's it's either everything is going to be uh, everything is going to be committed or or everything isn't and it's going to fail. So um, next was it's just worth um, worth mentioning that that uh, you should get better diagnostics out of um, of Alfresco four as well. So so the error handling should log messages when something goes wrong. I know it, um, previous versions tended to be a bit um, a, a bit a bit uh, obscure when something's going wrong. So anyway, error handling and the final thing that I think is worth mentioning is that uh, it's got Alfresco style log for J logging in the disk drivers. So if if you're not quite sure of how something is going, you can use standard. Um, uh, standard logging to see what's going on. So um, this this is the this is the big thing that we 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 had to fix for Alfresco for is how how we deal with those shuffle scenarios like the create shuffle I showed you at the beginning. So um, we've put a framework for dealing with the shuffle scenarios and. We've removed all the hard-coded shuffle logic, um, and another 
piece of that work was to move all the, all the shuffle state out of the transactional layers. The thing about the Alfresco transactions is, is the way that they work, they may sometimes need to be retried. So, for example, if you if you're just um, if you're just got a, a, a counter counting the number of times you've opened a file or something like that, that causes that's um, that. If, if you then have to retry that transaction, that causes absolute chaos to, to something that should be quite simple. But um, so all, all, the, all the state has been moved, moved out of the transactional layers. So let, me, so let me, I'll now talk about the shuffles. So, um, so this was the, the create shuffle. And uh, I'll, I'll, I think, so, so the, these are the options that uh, that we um, <laughs> that that we, we we came up for for how how to deal with with shuffling. The first is uh, I've called the sausage machine, and the idea behind the sausage machine was it would be um, a pipeline, and all the operations from SIFs would uh, come into the pipeline. Um, we then work out what should happen to the Alfresco repository, and finally, when um, finally when 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 it all was clear that, that w what should be done, the Alfresco repository um, would be updated. So, in fact, in fact, we got this working, but there were um, a couple of a couple of issues with it. So. The, f the, the first issue was um, that um, you know, a simple operation like does file A exist, um, if you've got a delete command in your pipeline then uh, for file A, then suddenly you need to, you need to as well as looking, as, as well as querying the, re the, re the repository to see where the file A exists, you also need to look in your, in your pipeline to see if there's any delete. And, and that sort of logic just became quite tricky. Um, now, the, the the final nasty nasty point was um, if your if your repository is shut down while you've got commands in your pipeline, then you've lost data. So, so that was a nasty point and and kind of <laughs> killed that killed that approach. So the second the second approach. Uh, we tried was um, something called the watchers. It's probably there's probably a better term, but that, that's what I called it. Um, so the idea behind, behind this way of working is that um, as SIFS commands come through, they're run past a set of scenarios, and the scenarios say what they uh, what they want to do, um, and there's a concept of of priority. So the highest priority scenarios win. Um, scenarios contain their own state, which which ties into the earlier point of how you you do things like reference counting. Um, if each scenario has its own state, then that's fine. Um, that that logic is is above the transactional layer. Um, um, and the final point is that many scenarios run at once. So. So, so it's not just so so that when 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 a particular operation happens over SIFs, you're not quite sure what's going to happen in future. Um, it may the scenarios may they they may be interested they, as as time goes on and more more operations are done. Uh, it may become. You know, they may become more interested in what's going on, or they might they might say, "No, I'm I'm not interested. This this is not inter um, This this scenario wasn't for me." So so the idea is that um, at, at the end of each command that's been come through SIFs, um, Alfresco is in an, is in a known and persistent state. So if the server was to crash at that point, um, you're fine. You're in a known persistent state. Um, when it comes back up, you haven't lost any data, and the uh, um, the other um, 
So, so the, 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 the other term is, is that um, when, when scenarios find out that there's something to do, um, which, which we call scenarios firing, um, because, because we've had a known persistent state, they have to, they have to, have to counter transact. It's a bit like sort of um, normal record keeping where, where you can't just undo an operation. You have to, um, you know, in, in a record book, you, you need to, you need to counter transact. So I'll just give an example for next for how the create shuffle works um, with the scenarios. So first of all, um, file A exists and then the next is the temp file that is created and for example word creates temp files with with a, a specific name pattern and I, I can I can show you I can show you that how, how that's configured later um, and now um, and now things get this is the most complicated slide in the presentation so I'll take a bit of time over it so the first thing was that the file the file A existed and then that temp file was created. The next, the next operation that the, the create shuffle would do is it would move file A, um, which is the one up there, down to the old file, so the green dotted line. But in this case, the cre a create scenario has been watching to see what's going on. So instead of, instead of the file A being moved down to the old file, um, the scenario says, this is my scenario and fires. At which point, it copies just the content from the temporary file into file A. The next thing it does is it moves the temporary file down into where the old file is, and it moves file A to where the temporary file is. So, bit of shenanigans, but the next thing, the next thing that Shuffle is going to do is move the temp file back into file A. So at that point, we have file A with its new content and anything else associated with it is, has been maintained. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so any secondary associations, its node ref, its version history is all intact. Um, and the final bit of the scenario is to delete the old file. So at that point, it's just deleted the temporary file. So that's just an example of, ha of how we've made the create shuffle scenario work. Oops. So um, we've got a number of, of scenarios built into, um, uh, into uh, Alfresco 4. Uh, we've got a create shuffle, which is triggered by a, a create of a file with a specific name. We've got a rename of, uh, sorry, a scenario rename, which is triggered by, um, triggered by a file being renamed. So the, the common example of that is, you may have come across, is the VI editor, which will typically take a file and then rename it with a tilde at the end. So the rename shuffle works with that. Uh, and then, and then there's, there's various others like a create, delete, rename, uh, double rename. And this, this list of scenarios may get longer as we find more client applications uh, doing uh, various things, but I, th I think we're getting to the point where most patterns for shuffling have, have, have been covered. So it then becomes just a case of configuring the various scenarios. Um, finally, uh, the final two scenarios are worth mentioning because they're a little bit different. Uh, the open file scenario is just dealing with um, reference counting of opens and closes of files. So, for example, SIFs may do open file, open file, close file, close file. And it's only on that. So, so there's, a, there's a, a, a count between the opens and the close. And it's only on the second close that the file should actually be closed. So that's what open file is doing. 
And the, the, final, um, the final scenario on that list is the simple non-buffered, which is basically do uh, the bog standard thing that you would do um, if there's no other shuffle. So, so the way it works is that the other scenar scenarios are, are configured with a high priority. So if, the, if they see something interesting, they, they butt in and do something different. If, if there's nothing, if there's no scenarios, um, if there's no scenarios sort of doing special stuff, then the simple buffered scenario, for example, if you do a create, it will do a create. If you do a delete, it will do a delete. Um, and uh, and that's, that's the way it works. It, it may need to become more complex over time, but at the moment it's, it's simple and stupid, and that's the way it works. So I'll just give a, a quick... Um, a quick um, run through of the various the various classes, so you can actually see in the code if you want to look. The first the first box at the top is the JLAN um, the the JLAN components, and the first class is the, the first class in, involved is called the buffered content disk driver. If you want to see what's going on, you may like to to look at that um, debug it. As its name says, it, do, it does a bit of buffering. Um, uh, the non-transactional disk driver is, is interesting because it's where the rules are brought in. And uh, the rule evaluator is configured with a collection of scenarios. So for each command coming in from the top, the rules are evaluated um, and then and then commands are passed down to either the file, well, to the file system command executor, which talks to something called the content disk driver 2. If you're familiar with um, older versions of Alfresco, you've probably looked, you, you may have looked at the content disk driver. Um, that still exists in Alfresco 4, but we've just got a cunningly named content disk driver number two, which is, it's a little bit, it's a lot simpler than, than the other one. But they, these are the, the important classes that you might like to look in and debug. Um, so how do we configure the various uh, scenarios? Um, the important file here is the network protocol context and I don't know if you can read that. Um, it's a little bit small, but um, but there's uh, there's basically this this property called scenarios that's a long list of. <laughs> sorry, I, I know it's a bit small. Um, there's there's um, there's there's this long list of scenarios. So, for example, there's uh, the the one the one in the middle here is the Excel 2003 which does a create shuffle. Um, it looks for a pattern. Um, looks for a pattern of, of t if, if, if you remember back, I said, said, um, I said that, 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 a that um, the applications tend to create files with, with funny names. In, in this case, Excel creates a file um, with, eight, with basically eight characters Naught to nine A to F um, at at the at the end, uh, and then it uh, so so that it's just basically showing you how to to how to configure the various scenarios. But it may be it may be that um, um, that you're using SIFs with with a with with an application that that we haven't come across. So it might be that you you need to create one of these or configure one of these shuffle scenarios for your particular application. Um, so so that's the first. That's how you 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 plug in your your scenarios, and um, it may be that you that that you have a, a, a it may be that you have a scenario that's that's 
that some, you know it, it's something that we haven't seen before, and it's some, or something specific to your business. In which case, you can write your own scenarios and plug them into the scenario handlers. So, um, hopefully, the the, the uh, so so the not too difficult. So the we've got a, an interface called scenario, and that's got a single method called create instance. So. Um, so, and that takes, um, and create instance takes an operation. So, to use the, use the, um, use the example from earlier, the Excel, um, the Excel scenario was looking for a create operation with a certain pattern. So, so that's, that's how it's implemented. I, I can show you the code next. So scenario and the other um, scenario instance. So scenario instance has, um, well, first of all, it's got this ranking, which is the high, medium, and low, which is the way that um, that scenarios say whether they're in, they're <coughs> whether they're um, whether they're going to win or not. Um, actually, in um, since since this presentation has been written. Um, we came. Um, there was some. App, there's an Apple scenario where we have two scenarios that need to to cooperate rather than fight. So there's there's po possibly this 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 um, this interface gets a little bit long. But the the important method here is the there's an evaluate. So each each scenario evaluates an operation, and and it returns. A command that says what to do to the repo. Um, so, this, okay. So we've got the priority, we've got the evaluate method, and the final method is is the scenario complete. So when the scenario is complete, it it basically just goes away and dies. So it, it's going to be complete if it if it fires and completes its work, or if the scenario decides no, this this wasn't for me in the first place. So, um, I'll just give a quick example of of something called a rename shuffle because that's um, that's probably probably the easiest one. So this was the um, this is the scenario from something like a VI editor. So we start with a file A. The first thing that VI does is it renames the file to file A tilde, uh, and then it's going to create a new file called file A, and then, uh, right, so I'll just go back, and then it would delete that, and then it would try, and, sorry, so it would, uh, right, so first of all, it renames file, file A to file A tilde, then it creates file A, then the next thing it's going to do is, um, is delete file a tilde but file a tilde is the, is the file that we care about it may have secondary associations ver version history all the other stuff so so what the rename shuffle will do is when we try and delete file a tilde um, the scenario is going to fire and whoops and it's going to copy content from file a to file A tilde, it's going to delete file A and rename file A tilde to file A. So it's going to shuffle the file back. So that's a rename shuffle. And I'll just I'll just give a quick a quick um, I'll just show you the, the code. So First, the first thing is the um, the rename shuffle. So, rename shuffle has the create instance method here, and if you remember, the create is looking for a rename with a certain pattern. So, in this case, it's got a pattern matching, um, and it's looking for a pattern matching the uh, a two file. So if if we get a rename operation and it matches the pattern, 
then return an instance. So not terribly difficult at all. So that's the, the scenario rename. And uh, the rename shuffle instance is the, um, the thing that will actually do the work. So in this case, it, first of all, the first operation is the rename of the file file to file tilde. And then it's going to look for creation of the old file and, and then deletion of the file tilde. So if we go down, um, the evaluate method is the important one. Uh, so we start off looking for the rename here. Um, and if so, if we get if we get um, a rename, uh, we then I, I mean the way the way I tend to build these is, is is a big switch statement and then going through the different states. So if we get a rename that that's what we expect, then we go into this initialized state. Once we are initialized, we're then looking for a create here. Um, if we find a create, we're then looking for a delete. Now looking for the delete is, is where the interesting stuff is going to happen. So if we get a delete of, of the file that, uh, in this case, the file um, A tilde, then this is, where, this is where the scenario is going, to, is going to fire. So in this case, it returns a list of commands. Um, and in this case, um, it's worth pointing out there's there's some operation so um, so first of all we've got a compound command and the idea behind a compound command is it can be uh, a collection of commands that are executed as one transaction um, and in this case the compound command is going to contain uh, a copy content a rename and a delete so that's how the, the the picture I showed earlier is um, is implemented, um, and I'll just show the network protocol. So this is where this is the the slide. This this is where you plug in your own scenarios if you if you have to configure your own scenarios. Um, so, so we've got a list of them, looking for various, for various patterns um, and various, <coughs> excuse me, and various different scenarios on that pattern. So, so we've got. Um, okay, so I, I think I, I've gone rapidly through that presentation, but uh, um, do we do we have any questions? Sorry, I think the microphone's coming your way. Hi there, two questions. The first question is, are there any significant changes between uh, 4.0.d and 4.2.b community? Uh, any differences between It's significant, four? yeah. Um, there, there are, as I, as I was saying, um, there, the, well, the main, the main bulk of this work went into uh, for, um, I think it's basically for four zero a, so 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 the but these the scenarios have been refined, so there are there are a, a couple of scenarios that are fairly recent, uh, in particular, um, in particular um, since since this this was this has been worked, um, Apple Apple Lion came out, and. Uh, you may or may not know. One of the things that, that Apple did in Apple Lion was they rewrote their SIFS drivers. So unfortunately, that's caused a bit of chaos for this, this code here because the patterns change. So um, there's a few new patterns. Um, I'm not sure if they're in community 4.2b. I think I suspect they are. 
but there, there's, there's a bit of a difference there in that there's a couple of patterns to deal with with Lion in particular and um, as I say we, we've now got a, a, a two scenarios that cooperate so so this 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 has moved on um, and that that's that's based, and I think there's some JLAN work as well that's that's happened between those versions. Right. So that was, that was your first question. That was my first question. My second question is, if we needed to, for example, um, write our own patterns, can we do that and drop those in the extension directory? Uh, yes, um, you could. You can take this. This is this is normal Alfresco configuration. So you can you can um, uh, basically copy this. Uh, uh, yeah, this this being called rule evaluator, so you could you can copy this rule evaluator into your own file in the extensions directory um, and overwrite it to your heart's content. So so that's that's what I would anticipate. Um, yeah, it's just just that one being there. Great, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, I don't don't let me keep you from lunch. We have lunch next. Um, if you've got any any sort of detailed questions, as I said, I'll I'll be available on the engineering office hours. So put your name and I'll uh, and we can chat. Thank you very much for your time.